Hey guys, so I wanted to make a video of notes from videos I haven't posted and the reason I haven't posted these videos um, are varied. Um, a lot of the time it will be because I watch something and I don't resonate with the energetic um, in the video. So even if the information is good, something about the energy in the video is off-putting to me um, because I've made that much more progress and so I'm like oh I don't resonate with the energy here so I'm not gonna put this on the internet that's a huge one another one is that there's just too many disorganized thoughts or repetitive thoughts um, that have been covered in other videos uh, one thing I did want to say was why would you watch like okay thought experiment why would you watch my videos when you could just watch people who are like very obviously healed I was thinking about that um, like right when I got to the end of my notes that I'm writing of like why would you watch a channel like this when you could just watch like benzo coaches who are 100% healed doing much better working again like doing great this that and that would be a question for you to answer you know maybe you shouldn't um, unless you feel resonance so I just want to kind of underscore that I know I've said it before but this is definitely a journey of incrementally like shimmying your way up through the dark dirt out of a, you know, being buried alive kind of thing and toward like, you know, like kind of biting your way back to life kind of thing. So if you identify with that, then this might be a cool channel to watch. I also think I speak outside of the scope of, you know, benzo injury and I'm much more interested in how toxicity and trauma and this sort of ratcheting up that people do is basically I believe contributing to a whole um, you know gamut of uh, maladies and suffering that people are dealing with and so I don't think that the things I'm discussing are really sort of limited to benzo injury and um, you know maybe I will change the channel name at some point shift it or start a new channel I'm not really sure anyway I wanted to do a video covering like very cursory notes from videos I haven't posted from for the reasons I listed because I think the information is important to have out um, in the universe but for whatever reason the video like it was just too repetitive it was disorganized um, unclarified or the energy was off and it just didn't feel good to post it so this is going to be really cursory from videos that were like you know 20 30 minutes long um, there are a couple after having gone over them again where I'm like, okay, I want to edit this down and get this out because I think this is a really cool concept. There's a couple that seem a little conspiracy theory um, and I guess I would just encourage people to, as best they can, try to think outside the box as much as you humanly can. Um, especially considering that we have so much depression, anxiety, and suicidality, um, you know, like in especially in the united states um and we really need to start thinking about getting outside the box um to treat these issues because it, it turns out big pharma is not cutting it and actually contributing to it um so the first the first video is about victim mentality and um how victim mentality in the extreme can like go all the way to narcissism and this was a very tricky one for me to post because I don't like, I don't love the terminology victim mentality. I don't like lazy language. I think victim mentality could very easily be, um, you know, there could be another term to describe a misunderstanding of how to meet challenge. Um, if you, from a young age, experience challenge and, and, the way you face off with it is to kind of rest the body, to become nesty, to kind of turn inward and not sort of teach the body um, uh, challenge and boldness and um, resilience. I believe in some small part in terms of a very complex pie of what's contributing to people, contributing to people's problems, the majority of which I believe is toxicity creating extreme distress helplessness hopelessness and what people are calling victim mentality and even all the way to narcissism yes i believe toxicity is 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 contributing to narcissism um i believe a very small part of that pie 
is this concept of a misunderstanding of how to be um, productive in your life, productive in relationships, and productive around teaching the body resilience. The reason I didn't post this video was because I just so much believe that the undercurrent of toxicity is contributing to this issue, so much so that when people are unburdened enough from toxicity, they find that these underdeveloped levels of you know, undeveloped consci like consciousness and low level behavior actually are kind of melt away. Um, and so I had a hard time posting this because I'm struggling, a, I'm struggling with, with the extent that many people in the brain retraining and like mind body space are sort of finding different ways to poke at the psyche and blame the psyche when the body is so burdened. Um, and please look at my community my community tab for kind of thoughts that come to me about how these two spaces the detox space is being is a religion to the extreme and the brain retraining space is a religion to the extreme um, and both so many people are doing both of these things but giving one all of the credit um, or saying that one is the only viable option and to me that is turning into religiosity i've had several videos i've not posted about that um, the reason I'm so passionate about it, for one, is because I have mold and heavy metal toxicity that causes perseveration. Um, and also the survival brain, toxic brain, is constantly looking for um, the truth and to get to the bottom of the truth. Um, and so when you see people kind of packaging things with a religiosity lilt or like leaning, it can feel a little like propagandistic. And so my brain's kind of like, well, what is the truth? And I think the truth is that both of these things ratchet us down from the toxicity trauma ladder. Um, the next video that I didn't post was about mold and benzo illness and how um, the reason why people aren't putting these together, there are myriad reasons. Um, but um, I think one of the reasons I didn't post that video was because there was just so much repetitive content in it. But the main thing is that, uh, especially for people who are not he healing five, six years out, you know, their, their illnesses are just, um, their illnesses are just like persevering and they're not getting any window wave quality to the healing trajectory. Um, a lot of the time, a lot of the times why these people, even early on, do not think about mold is because toxic mold can be very subtle. Um, so I would just explore that. I'm not going to like redo the videos that I made. I'm just going to kind of go over these lightly, but explore like what toxic mold can mean in a home. Um, it's not always like a glaring thing like The Last of Us where it's like, you know, crawling over, you know, crawling through your walls and over your flesh. It can be very, very subtle. Um, and insidious in that way um another thing is that something about benzo illness causes very blinder blinder thinking and and sort of like a kind of a vengefulness and a linear thinking of like these people fucked me over like screw psychiatry i'm gonna die because of this and you don't it doesn't allow you to think about your illness kind of in a with complexity even though you can have had quite a bit of suffering before the benzo. I mean, why were you put on a benzo? So please, um, later on my list, it says like, look up the SIRS symptoms, like make sure this isn't you and really think, try as you can or get somebody outside of your body to think about this critically and to go through those symptoms and say, okay, were you going through this? Is this potentially um, what was causing your panic disorder, your restless leg, your uh, insomnia, right? Okay, the next video was mold metals and personality disorders so this one was like I'll, I'll probably post this one but i want to edit it down because it has a lot of repetitiveness like redundancy redundancies and it seems almost nearly like a conspiracy theory video but i think that's just because we haven't thought outside the box enough about psychiatric disorders but essentially i made the case in the video that i believe there's a lot of comorbidity between things like for example narcissism um the ocd behavior of hoarding um and mold illness and there seems like to be a lot of comorbidity there and so basically the video is saying like because it's, it's it's a it's a whopper of a video it's it's intense and definitely 
sounds a little chemtrail chemtrails I will admit um but uh I just think it's something to explore. It's something that's interesting. And, uh, and I think what's interest, what's difficult is that because the pendulum is swung so far back to the extreme of making people with narcissism, borderline, um, what is it? Antisocial personality disorders, et cetera. Like the, I, th- I think it's like class A and B personality disorders. The pendulum has swung so far to the extreme of like, these people are the devils and even like, we're sort of what is it like uh we're sort of uh, pathologizing people even who just kind of struggle with elements of these things as having these disorders um and you know of course because these people have caused so much trauma to the world and to people and to to society and to families of course there is going to be a backlash but i think we also need to be thinking about like is it possible that there isn't just a trauma that's moving th- through the generations, but that in fact through, and this is mentioned from the naturopath who's very well studied, Evan Brand, that you can actually be passing heavy metals and mycotoxin through the breast milk. Is it humanly possible that metals and mold are contributing to um, the prevalence of personality disorders through generations in families, as well as a, you know a history of like, you know, their genetic, the genetics and the trauma. So that's something I pose in a video. I will post it, but again, it's, it's a little intense. And I was like, do I want this on the internet? But yeah, I do. Cause I'd like the world to be like a less traumatized place. And I don't believe it's just about, I don't believe it's just about brain work. I think there is a toxic reality for many people. Another video I did was about windows and waves um windows and waves in my opinion and i think really it really bears out this is just the detox working more effectively and working less effectively is it possible that psych drugs downregulate nerves and therefore this affects the immune system that runs down the um the vitality of detox um and please research detox and detour- detox organs to like fully understand this more. Is it possible that that's happened? Yes. Is it possible a certain amount of trauma to the body has run down or put certain parts of the brain in shock that affect the immune system? Absolutely. But 100% the presence of toxicity will do this. And so, um, yeah, windows and waves, I don't believe are just a nerve upregulating and downregulating. I think it's potentially the detox coming online and then becoming more stagnant, um, which will fluctuate DPDR, will fluctuate the, the, the vitality of the body. In this video, I talk about how I saw, I believe they're called like a functional osteopath, or it may have been an osteopath that did like this kind of trigger point, um, sort of acupuncture type work on me when I was in high school and she said I had really low vitality and at the time I just thought okay well that's a that's an interesting thought but I didn't you know I don't think I even was intellectual enough to think oh that well maybe that's just some bullshit or something but now in reflection I believe she was a thousand percent dead on and could actually feel and tune into lymph flow in my body, which I believe was very, very low, which is what I believe she meant by low vitality. Um, And I believe that's what, um, that's what people um, are dealing with, with chronic illness. And for whatever reason, toxicity and trauma has run down the vitality of the body. Um, Oh, and then I said something in the video about how it makes a lot of sense if somebody's tapering or if they're in like a protracted state of injury, if they go to an event or yeah, they have an event or they go do something that's strenuous, um, potentially a body can be flowing like pretty decently to be able to do that thing. But then when you go to do that event, a combination of not eating wonderfully, a little bit of stress, um, having to use energy, your, the energy of your body and reserves that maybe that you don't have, um, kind of sipping in less of ideal air, um, just the combination of that, those layers of, um, those layers of, you know, burden on the body will kind of snap a body into a 
um, shutdown mode that will then produce waves because then anything that's in the system, right, is not flowing. So it's all just kind of affecting the brain and like the, the nervous system. So um, that's kind of what I think is going on there in terms of, you know, especially people who can maybe are even more functional who are tapering or in protracted withdrawal, but they manage to like have go to like a family event and and go have a day out or whatever. And then the body kind of snaps shut. Um, and so, yeah, it's just I really just believe windows and waves is a reality of the detox uh, organs and uh, components. Um, the next video I didn't post was about like not writing your story in ink, um, and not applying so many so sort of stories and poetry to your, um, reality that you don't stay loose enough in your understanding to allow like logic to kind of step in. So human beings have a way of like using story and poetry and metaphor to cope and make sense of their experience. This is beautiful. This is necessary. I'm a huge fan of like storytelling and poetry, like absolutely adore it. Um, but I think it's really important to stay loose with this because of how much there can just be sort of a physical toxic reality that leads to a logical conclusion of more windows, more fluidity of the body, more vitality of the body. And when you write the story in ink so, you know, so permanently that you are like really deeply traumatized or you really need to unearth some trauma or, um, you know, and you add a lot of sort of like kind of human poetry to the situation, what it can do, I think, is deter really important detox work. And also, who even knows you may potentially be compounding the trauma component by not allowing your story to be flowy enough to move forward with what is actually happening, what is on the table. So don't allow too many human stories about what trauma and brain work is to to not give you that moment of like self-reflection and like like analysis of your actual situation and what's actually happening for you right now in the present um the next video it's one i posted and i took down because um you know just i've just done that much more detox i've just become that much more like tuned in and i'm like ooh, this is not conservative enough for me to have on the internet i'm not comfortable with having this much information about myself on the internet uh, the toxicity trauma brain will be happy to overshare. The more healthy brain will lean, I believe, will lean more toward cons a little being a little more conservative, a little more s mysterious, a little more private. Um, that le lends itself to another video I didn't post. So I posted a video about my whole journey with symptoms before and after the benzo, or the benzodiazepine prescription which I think is a great video and is very could be very useful to somebody but I with just that much many more coffee enemas that many more binders that much more clarity and just rest I'm like ooh, this is not I'm not comfortable with this being on the internet it's a very good sign it's like oh I actually am afforded privacy and don't need to spill my guts on the internet around every single thing that's happened also that video talks about hardship and symptoms which does not illuminate any of the beauty and like um, extreme I would say like extraordinary privilege beauty like the 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 trappings of what makes life worth fighting for and so I'm not comfortable with it being online in its current um, like iteration but this is to say if you were put on a benzodiazepine and you just assume that the thing you were put on the benzodiazepine before before was some nebulous status of psychiatric you know like um pathology or just something that you take for granted that you've never looked at the root cause of please consider looking at the SIRS symptoms again with somebody potentially maybe outside of your body who can help you reason with it if it's reason if it's relevant some things that are not on the SIRS list of symptoms that I think are important to look out for are chronic UTIs, chronic yeast infections, skin problems like psoriasis and eczema, ADHD symptoms, and anxiety and depression. Um, so look at the SIRS symptoms, look and 
think about those symptoms, um, um, you know, as early as childhood um, and if those were in play. Uh, the next video I didn't post was about practitioners. I would see if I was seeing a practitioner, I will put them below. The reason I didn't see, I'm not using a functional medicine doctor or a naturopath um, is because I am very self-reliant. I, I don't have a lot of money and resources and I'm not planning on adding a huge level of debt to the trauma that I've experienced already. I am seeing an upper cervical chiropractor which I think is going really well. It's been incredibly challenging and daunting um, to the point of almost going over my capacity, but I'm, I am pushed myself and I'm so proud of myself. I'm also going to be working with a coach to do mineral balancing. And I've also had a little bit of coaching just to kind of like compare my notes to someone else's. Um, but the practitioners I would be working with, were I to use a practitioner, were I to work in that team will be listed below. I think these are great practitioners. Um, and to me, they've really like met all of my, you know, OCD level um, specifications for working with somebody. Um, I'm either not there yet or I don't, or I feel like I can kind of do quite a bit on my own still. Okay, the next video is about unplugging from uh, coaching channels, health channels, aspirational channels. Um, that put too much on your to-do list when you already have the obvious stuff on your to-do list. Um, and I feel like I've maxed out on that. Many people haven't. And so you, you have to kind of tune into when that is that when you've gotten there. Um, a laundry list of things you're not doing well enough in terms, especially in terms of like dealing with trauma and like, you know, unearthing and probing and like kind of in a different way sort of pathologizing the psyche to me can be an additional additional layer of trauma um, that's standing in your way from really the assumption of health like that's the ideal right I'm I'm healthy it's happening I'm assuming it so you don't want to put so much in your way of assumption that you're kind of like contributing to your problem you need to be able to find you know at least in my opinion you need to be able to find an end an ending to the obvious and then go, okay, I've taken in enough where if a human being did this all like pretty adequately that they should see, um, you sh you should see the body trending toward health. This is a video I haven't posted, but it's something I want to say is that you're looking for trends toward health. So don't let somebody's nonlinear health journey, like get you down if somebody is saying like, you know, my brain was on fire for 10 years and now it's not and I have more control and I have more like, you know, clarity to self and more, you know, healthy boundaries and um, I feel more at ease. I feel huge portions of the day where I don't feel pain. That like, let it, let it either unplug and just watch people that are 100% healed and you know that if that's like what's going to work for you and I think that that's great. Or allow like the gains to inspire you. Allow checking off symptoms to inspire you. Like that's what this is. It's about the falling away of symptoms and the trending toward the good. Um, oh, off of this like just watching health coaches kind of like putting out kind of another human story or human concept around brain work. Just being, you know, it, it kind of reaching its limit at some point, at least for specific people. And I think especially those of us who kind of tend toward OCD, we have to be really careful to focus on getting the toxicity out of our body um, and not kind of poking and prodding the brain so much when it's ill-timed. And you'll feel that as you work through detox. But the main thing I want to say with brain work, at least this is what I, like how I, you know, very... Uh, glibly understand it is like we're, you're working on safety and then you're working on playing around with aspirational work and then you want to get to assumption and there was no conference where like Annie Hopper introduced DNRS or Gupta introduced um Gupta introduced um what is it called Gupta god now I can't remember his program but there's no conference like where someone introduced a brain retraining program and like God themselves, God herself, God himself came down and said, this is the only way to heal a body. These are containers to work on safety, aspirational work, 
and assumption and they do it in different ways and they're very useful but you can implement these concepts in your own uh, personalized unique way that is completely specific to you people heal all sorts of ways they heal with a tremendous amount of detox and they find that that does all of it people do ayahuasca or psilocybin and they find that that do, that gets them 90 percent of the way there people just wait and the body kind of heals and they're good in a good enough environment and in a low enough sort of trauma reality um, you could also say that they're just their neuroception skills are very high so they're able to kind of deal with a lot like their capacity is very high and so they just kind of go on to healing people heal all different ways and all different packaging and this is just also anything that's coming you know packaged in english is just mainly this culture's uh, spin on healing people heal in all different cultures and all different capacities and all different ways around the world so don't get addicted to one medium and don't don't stack up so many things on your list where it's like you're getting away from the core principles of safety aspiration and assumption if you're getting away from that you have to turn down the noise and you just tune into the like you know i mean i don't care if you have to go outside and get back to like you know remember when kids would sit in a semicircle and make rain sounds right like they'd clap and they'd and rub their hands together and make rain noises like get back to you know, smelling the flowers, touching the grass, and making rain noises. Like, this is a this is a less is more affair. This is not a 20 layers deep in psychic probing um, reality to healing. I don't believe people heal that way. Um, and so the reason I'm speaking to this is because it's something I've dealt with where it's just like, my brain's just like, enough, enough. Like, everything's got to just get muted because I have enough information now. And now it's about just doing the work, right? Um, oh, I did a whole video. This is the last one. I did a whole video on what like toxicity brain feels like and what healing brain, what healing nervous system feels like. I think this is a great video and so important, but it's not, it's just not there for me yet. I think what, I'll, my, what I might do is post it and then post additional information under the video um, because I just think it's really important and really cool to hear from someone what it feels like to what the sort of status or weather of the mind feels like when you're ratcheted up this toxicity trauma ladder and then what it becomes when you become when you're when you're trending toward health um, and there's so there's there's interesting I feel like there's some interesting insight in that video that could be useful to someone I think it would be have been very useful to me um, in the thick of it and so I'll probably post it but then I'll put additional information under the video so look out for that video next uh, yeah these are videos I did not post for what for the various reasons and I just want people to have this information and I don't want my like OCD brain to stand in the way of it kind of you know being somewhere for someone to think about and uh you know, like sink their teeth into a bit or, you know, kind of flesh out for themselves. So I uh, hope this was helpful. I know it was like a, li a little fast and rambly, but um, this will help me delete some stuff off my phone. And uh, yeah, and, and I'll post, I think I will post two videos, but I just want to edit them down. Okay, guys, take care.